computer networking. Introduction. Networking, also known as computer networking, is the practice of transporting and exchanging data between nodes over a shared medium in an information system. Networking comprises not only the design, construction, and use of a network, but also the management, maintenance, and operation of the network infrastructure, software, and policies. Computer networking enables devices and endpoints to be connected to each other on a local area network, LAN, or to a larger network, such as the internet or a private wide area network, WAN. This is an essential function for service providers, businesses, and consumers worldwide to share resources, use or offer services, and communicate. Networking facilitates everything from telephone calls to text messaging to streaming video to the Internet of Things. The level of skill required to operate a network directly correlates to the complexity of a given network. For example, a large enterprise may have thousands of nodes and rigorous security requirements such as end-to-end -end encryption, requiring a specialized network administrators to oversee the network. At the other end of the spectrum, a layperson may set up and perform basic troubleshooting for a home Wi-Fi network with a short instruction manual. Both examples constitute computer networking. Types of networking There are two primary types of computer networking, wired networking and wireless networking. Wired networking requires the use of a physical medium for transport between nodes. Copper-based Ethernet cabling, popular due to its low cost and durability, is commonly used for digital communications in businesses and homes. Alternatively, optical fiber is used to transport data over greater distances and at faster speeds, but it has several trade-offs including higher cost and more fragile components. Wireless networking uses radio waves to transport data over the air, enabling devices to be connected to a network without any cabling. Wireless LANs are the most well-known and widely deployed form of wireless networking. Alternatives include microwave, satellite, cellular, and Bluetooth, among others. Components of networking. Computer networking requires the use of physical network infrastructure, including switches, routers, and wireless access points, and the underlying firmware that operates such equipment. Other components include the software necessary to monitor, manage, and secure the network. Additionally, Networks rely on the use of a standard protocols to uniformly perform discrete functions or communicate different types of data regardless of the underlying hardware. For example, voice over IP can transport IP telephony traffic to any endpoint that supports the protocol. HTTP provides a common way for browsers to display web pages. The Internet Protocol, also known as TCP slash IP, is a firm or family of protocols responsible for transporting data and services over an IP based. A network allows various computers to communicate with other computers by connecting via medium. There are three major types of a computer network, namely WAN, man and land designed for operating in an area that they cover in this article we will discuss the primary difference between land man and van but before we do that we will look into each of them individually all three of these are similar yet different in various aspects the significant difference being their geographical locations coverage van covers the largest area man comprises more than an area land, and land only covers a small area. Various other types of computer networks also exist, such as VPN, Virtual Private Network, EPN, Enterprise Private Network, SAN, Storage Area Network, 
and pan, personal area net. What is LAN? It is an abbreviation for local area network. It connects various network devices in a way that the workstations and PC, personal computers, can share programs, tools, and data. A single switch or a stack of various switches connects a group of various devices and computers together. They use a private addressing scheme that the TCP slash IP protocol defines. The private addresses of every computer are unique in relation to one another. At every LAN's boundary, you will find routers that connect them all to a larger web. The rate of data transmission is very high because it links to a very limited number of computers. These connections exhibit a higher speed and require relatively inexpensive hardware. For example, network adapters, hubs, ethernet, cables, etc. A land covers a very small area of about a few kilometers and people own them privately for home, office, buildings, schools, hospitals, etc. It is very easy for people to design a LAN and maintain it. The communication medium that it uses has coaxial cables and twisted pair cables. It also has minimal, minimal noise and error due to its short distance coverage. Data rates in early LAN range from 4 Mbps to 16 Mbps. This is speed extends to approx 100 to 1000 Mbps per day. The LAN has a very short propagation delay. It relies typically on wired connections to attain better security and speed, but it may also comprise wireless connections. The smallest of LANs may make use of just two computers, and the larger ones may accommodate thousands of them. Users experience high fault tolerance and low congestion in a LAN network, like a few students playing together in the same room. What is LAN? It is an abbreviation for Metropolitan Area Network. It covers a smaller area than that of WAN and a larger area as compared to a LAN. A MAN basically connects two devices or more that reside apart but in the same or different cities. It may also serve as an Internet Service Provider ISP and it basically covers a larger geographical area. Customers who need a better speed and higher quality connectivity opt for MAN. They are very hard to maintain and design, and their speeds range in terms of megabytes per second (Mbps). MAN shows lesser fault tolerance and more congestion in the network. It also exhibits a moderate rate of data transfer and propagation delay. A single organization may or may not own a MAN, as it is very costly. It makes use of devices like cable, flash wire, and modern for and modem for data transmission. A significant example of a man is those telephone company networks that are capable of providing high-speed lines DSL to a cable TV network or customers in any given city. What is WAN? It stands for Wide Area Network. It basically extends over large areas, but it might stay confined within a state or a country's boundaries. A connection of various lands may also constitute a WAN. They may connect to each other using radio waves and telephone lines. A WAN typically may stay limited to any enterprise, an organization, or a corporation, or may even be accessible to the general public. It comes with a technology that is very expensive and relatively high speed. WANs are basically of two types, point-to-point -point WAN and switch WAN. It is also very difficult to maintain as well as design a WAN. The fault tolerance is also very less, just like MAN, and it brings more congestion in a network. The communication medium deployed for WAN is the satellite link or public switch telephone network. The usual long-distance transmissions lead to a higher error and voice in a WAN. The data rate concerning a WAN is comparatively slower than LAN, but a tenth of its speed. It is because of the high distance that it covers and more number of terminals, servers, etc. The speed of transmission may range in a WAN from a few kbps kilobits per second to mbps megabits per second. One of the biggest issues that WAN faces is the propagation delay. A few devices that help in data transmission via WAN are 
satellites, microwaves, and optic wires. One example of a point-to-point -point WAN is the dial-up line connecting any home computer to the internet. One example of a switched WAN is the ATM, Asynchronous Transfer Mode Network. Difference between LAN, MAN, and WAN. Advantages of computer networks. The computers on the network can share hardware devices like printer, scanner, etc. Data and software can be shared within the computer on the network. Files can be transferred from one computer to another computer. Computers in the network can communicate with each other. Disadvantages of computer networks. Data and information may be stolen by computer hackers. If any computer in the network gets affected by the virus, there is high chance of spreading computer virus. Computers on the network have to depend on the server. Types of communication media. Number one, guided or bounded or wired communication media. A transmission media where data signals are transmitted along a specific path through cable is known as guided transmission media. It transfers data from one place to another with the help of wire. There are three types of cables used for wired network. They are twisted pair cable. The twisted pair cable consists of a pair of insulated copper wire twisted around each other. The number of twisted pair may 1, 2, 4 or more. The twisted pair cable is mostly used for connecting computers on the network. The twisted pair cable come in two categories, unshielded twisted pair and shielded twisted pair. UTP. A UTP cable is one of the most popular LAN cables. This cable consists of four twisted pairs of metal wires, means there are eight wires. Adding RJ45 connector at both ends of the cable, it becomes a LAN cable that we generally use. Shielded twisted pair, SCP. A shielded twisted pair cable, also known as IBM Type 1, is similar to UTP, but it has metallic covering place just underneath the plastic casing. It is more expensive than UTP cables. SCP cable offers the best protection from interference. It can support data transfer rate from 16 to 500 MB per second, millions of bits per second. Coaxial cable. Coaxial cable have wide bandwidth and noise immunity. These are widely used in long distance telephone lines as transmission speed is much higher than twisted pair cable. Fiber optic cable. Fiber optic cables are made up of plastic or glass fibers and give high quality transmission of signal at a very high speed. Fire Fiber optic cable transmissions are not affected by electromagnetic interference. These can be used to communicate either analog or digital signals. These are most commonly used for point-to-point one-way communication. Second, unbounded or unguided or wireless communication media. The way to transfer data without the help of wire is called unguided media. Types of unguided media microwave. The way to transfer data straightly from one point to another point in the way of light in the universe is called microwave system. Radio waves. Radio wave transmission are used for communication between computers in inaccessible locations or for short-range communications. The other benefit is the responsibility of reaching ruler and highly area which are not covered by land telephone lines. Satellite. Satellite communications are like microwave and has really and has relay stations in the sky. Transponders on the satellite are used to receive and retransmit signals sent from Earth stations. A transponder has a very high capacity and can handle more than 400 channels. Difference between simplex, duplex, full duplex, and half duplex mode. Basis for comparison, direction of communication. In simplex mode, the communication is unidirectional, half duplex, the communication is bidirectional but one at a time, and in full duplex mode, the communication is bidirectional. Send and receive, a device can only send the data but cannot receive it, or it can only receive the data but cannot send it. 
In half duplex mode, both the devices can send and receive the data but one at a time. Full modulex mode. Full duplex mode. Both the devices can send and receive the data simultaneously. Performance. The performance of half duplex mode is better than simplex mode. The performance of full duplex mode is better than half duplex mode. The full duplex mode has better performance among simplex and half duplex mode as it doubles the utilization of the capacity of the communication channel. Example of simplex mode are radio, keyboard, and monitor. Example of half duplex is walkie talkies. Example of full duplex mode is a telephone network. Synchronous and asynchronous. Asynchronous transmission. In asynchronous transmission, data is sent in form of byte or character. This transmission is a half duplex type time transmission. In this transmission, start bits and stop bits are added with data. It does not require synchronization. For example, emails, forums, Difference between synchronous and asynchronous transmission is given below. Types of network topology. In the computer network, there are various ways to which different components are connected to one another. Network topology is the way that defines the structure and how these components are connected to each other. Types of network topology. The arrangement of a network that comprises nodes and connecting lines via sender and receiver is referred to as network topology. The various network topologies are point-to-point -to -point topology, mesh topology, star, bus, ring, tree, hybrid topology. Point-to-point -to -point topology is a type of topology that works on the functionality of the sender and receiver. It is the simplest communication between two nodes, in which one is the sender and the other one is the receiver. Point to point provides higher bandwidth. Mesh topology. A mesh topology has the devices connected to one another device via a particular channel. In mesh topology, the protocols used are ASCP, ad hoc configuration protocol, DHCP, dynamic host configuration protocol, etc. In the given figure, you can find every device is connected to another via dedicated channels. These channels are known as links. Suppose the number of devices are connected with each other in a mesh topology is n. The number, the total number of ports that are required for each device is n minus 1. In figure 1, there are 5 devices connected to each other. Hence, the total number of ports required by each device is 4. The total number of ports required is n asterisk n minus 1. Suppose n number of devices are connected with each other in a mesh topology. Then the total number of dedicated links required to connect them is n c2 that is n bracket n minus 1 bracket divided by 2. In figure 1 there are 5 devices connected to each other. Hence the total number of links required is 5 multiplied by 4 divided by 2 is equal to 10. Advantages of mesh topology. Communication is very fast it's between the nodes. Mesh topology is robust. The fault is diagnosed easily. Data is reliable because data is transferred among the devices through dedicated channels or links. It provides security and privacy. Drawbacks of mesh topology. Installation and configuration are difficult. The cost of cables is high as bulk wiring is required, hence suitable for less number of devices. The cost of maintenance is high. Common example of mesh topology is the internet backbone, where various internet service providers are connected to each other via dedicated channels. This topology is also used in military communication system and aircraft navigation system. The star topology. In the star topology, all the devices are connected to a single hub through a cable. This hub is the central node and all other nodes are connected to the central node. The hub can be passive in nature, that is not an intelligent hub, such as broadcasting devices. At the same time, the hub can be intelligent, known as an active hub. Active hubs have repeaters in them. Coaxial cables or RJ similar 4-5 cables are used to connect the computers. In a star topology, many popular Ethernet LAN protocols are used as CD, collision detection, 
PSMA, carrier sense, multiple access, etc. Advantages of star topology. If n devices are connected to each other in a star topology, then the number of cables required to connect them is n. So it is easy to set up. Second, each device requires only one port, that is to connect to the hub. Therefore, the total number of ports required is n. Third, it is robust. If one link fails, only that link will affect and not other than that. Fourth, easy to fault identification and fault isolation. Five, the star topology is cost effective as it uses inexpensive coaxial cables. Drawbacks of star topology. If the concentrator hub on which the whole topology relies fails, the whole system will crash down. Second, the cost of installation is high. Third, performance is based on the single concentrator that is hub. Four, a common example of a star topology is a local area network in an office where all computers are connected to a central hub. This topology is also used in wireless networks where all devices are connected to a wireless access point. Bus topology. Bus topology is a network type in which every computer and network device is connected to a single cable. It is bidirectional. It is a multi-point connection and a non-robust topology because if the backbone fails, the topology crashes. In bus topology, various MAC media access control protocols are followed by LAN Ethernet connections like CDMA, Pure Aloha, CDMA, Slotted Aloha, etc. Figure 3 depicts a bus topology with shared backbone cable. The nodes are connected to the channel via drop line. Advantages of bus topology. If n devices are connected to each other in a bus topology, then the number of cables required to connect them is one, known as backbone cable, and n drop lines are required. Coaxial or twisted pair cables are mainly used in bus based networks that support up to 10 Mbps. The cost of the cable is less compared to other topologies, but it is used to build small networks. Bus topology is familiar technology as installation and troubleshooting techniques are well known. TSMA is the most common method for this type of topology. Drawbacks of bus topology. A bus topology is quite simpler, but it still it requires a lot of cabling. If the common cable fails, then the whole system will crash down. If the network traffic is heavy, it increases collision in the network. To avoid this, Various protocols are used in the MAC layer known as Pure Aloha, Slotted Aloha, CSMA slash CD, etc. Adding new devices to the network would slow down networks. Security is very low. A common example of bus topology is the Ethernet LAN, where all devices are connected to a single coaxial cable or twisted pair cable. This topology is also used in cable television networks. Ring topology. In a ring topology, it forms a ring connecting devices with exactly two neighboring devices. A number of repeaters are used for ring topology with a large number of nodes because if someone wants to send some data to the last node in the ring topology with 100 nodes, then the data will have to pass through 99 nodes to reach the 100th node. Hence, to prevent data loss, repeaters are used in the network. The data flows in one direction, that is, it is unidirectional, but it can be made bidirectional by having two connections between each network node. It is called dual ring topology. In a ring topology, the token ring passing protocol is used by the workstations to transmit the data. The most common access method of ring topology is token passing, which is shown in the figure. Operations of ring topology. Number one, one station is known as a monitor station which takes all the responsibility for performing the operations. Second, to transmit the data, the station has to hold the token. After the transmission is done, the token is to be released for other stations to use. Third, when no station is transmitting the data, then the token will circulate in the ring. Fourth, there are two types of token release techniques. 
early token release releases the token just after transmitting the data and delayed token release releases the data token after the acknowledgement is received from the receiver. Advantages of ring topology. The, the data transmission is high speed. The possibility of collision is minimum in this type of topology. Cheap to install and expand. It is less costly than a SAR topology. Drawbacks of ring topology. The failure of a single node in the network can cause the entire network to fail. Troubleshooting is difficult in this topology. The addition of stations in between or the removal of stations can disturb the whole topology and it is less secure. Free topology. This topology is a variation of the SAT topology. This topology has a hierarchical flow of data. In tree topology, protocols like DHCP and SAT, the standard automatic configuration, are used. Figure 5, which shows the various secondary hubs are connected to the central hub which contains the repeater. This data flow from top to bottom, that is from the central hub to the secondary and then to the devices or from bottom to top, that is devices to the secondary hub and then to the central hub. It is a multi-point connection and a non-robust topology because if the backbone fails, the topology crashes. Advantages of free topology. It allows more devices to be attached to a single central hub. Thus, it increase, decreases the distance that is traveled by the signal to come to the devices. It allows the network to get isolated and also prioritized from different computers. We can add new devices to the existing network. Error detection and error correction are very easy in free topology. Drawbacks of draw to, uh, free topology. If the central hub gets fails, the entire system fails. The cost is high because of the cabling. If new devices are added, it becomes difficult to reconfigure. A common example of free topology is a hierarchy in large organization. A common example of free topology is a higher is the hierarchy in the large organization. At the top of the tree is the CEO who is connected to the different departments or divisions. Child note of the company, each department has its own hierarchy with managers overseeing different teams, grand child notes. The team members, leaf notes are at the bottom of the hierarchy connected to their respective managers and departments. Hybrid topology. This topological technology is the combination of all the various types of topology we have studied above. Hybrid topology is used when the nodes are free to take any form. It means these can be individuals such as the ring or a star topology or can be a combination of various types of topologies as seen below. Each individual topology uses the protocol that has been discussed earlier. Figure 6 depicts the structure of hybrid topology as seen it contains a combination of all different types of networks. Advantages of hybrid topology. This topology is very flexible. The size of the network can be easily expanded by adding new devices. Drawbacks of hybrid topology. Number 1. It is challenging to design the architecture of the hybrid network. Hubs used in this topology are very expensive. The infrastructure cost is very high as a hybrid network requires a lot of cabling and network devices. A common example of hybrid topology is a university campus network. The network may have a backbone of a star topology with each building connected to the backbone through a switch or router. Within each building, there may be a bus or ring topology connecting the different rooms and offices. The wireless access points also create a mesh topology for wireless devices. This hybrid topology allows for efficient communication between different buildings while providing flexibility and redundancy within each building. Computer security. Computer security refers to protecting and securing computers and their related data, network, software, hardware from unauthorized access misuse, theft, 
information loss and other security issues. The internet has made our lives easier and has provided us with lots of advantages, but it also has put our system security at risk of being infected by a virus of being hacked, information theft, damage to the system, and much more. Technology is growing day by day, and the entire world is in its grasp. We cannot imagine even a day without electronic devices around us. With the use of this growing technology, invaders, hackers, and thieves are trying to harm our computer security for man monetary gains, recognition purposes, ransom demands, bullying others, invading into our business other businesses, organizations, etc. In order to protect our system from all these risks, computer security is important. Types of computer security. Computer security can be classified into four types. Cyber security. Cyber security means securing our computers, electronic devices, networks, programs, systems from cyber attacks. Cyber attacks are those attacks that happen when our system is connected to the internet. Second, information security. Information security means protecting our system's information from theft, illegal use, and piracy from unauthorized use. Information security has mainly three objectives, confidentiality, integrity, and availability of information. Application security. Application security means securing our applications and data so that they don't get hacked and also the databases of the applications remain safe and private to the owner itself so that users' data remains confidential. Network security. Network security means securing a network and protecting the user's information about who is connected to that network. Over the network, hackers steal the packets of data through sniffing and spoofing attacks, man in the middle attack, war driving, etc., and misuse the data for their benefit. Denial of service attacks or DOS. A denial of service attack is a kind of cyber attack in which the attackers disturb the services of the particular network by sending infinite requests and temporarily or permanently making the network or machine resources unavailable to the intended audience. Second, backdoors. In a backdoor attack, malware, Trojan horse, or virus gets installed in our system and it start affecting its security along with the main file. Consider an example. Suppose you are installing free software from a certain website on the internet. Now, unknowingly, along with this software, a malicious file also gets installed. And as soon as you execute the installed software, that file's malware gets affected and starts affecting your computer security. This is known as backdoor. Eavesdropping. Eavesdropping refers to secretly listening to someone's talk without their permission or knowledge. Attackers try to steal, manipulate, modify, hack information or systems by passively listening to network communication, knowing passwords, etc. A physical example would be, suppose if you are talking to another person of your organization and if a third person listens to your private talk, then his tree is set to eavesdrop on your conversation. Similarly, your conversation on the internet may be eavesdropped by attackers listening to your private conversation by connecting to your network if it is insecure. Phishing. Phishing is pronounced as phishing and working functioning is also similar. While phishing, we catch fish by luring them with bait. Similarly, in phishing, a user is tricked by the attacker who gains the trust of the user or acts as if he is a genuine person and then steals the information by ditching. Not only attackers, but some certain websites that seem to be genuine, but actually they have fraud sites. These sites trick the users and they end up giving their personal information such as logging details or bank details or card numbers, etc. Phishing is of many types, voice phishing, text phishing, etc. Spoofing. Spoofing is the act of masquerading as a valid entity through falsification of data, such as an IP address or username, in order to gain access to information or resources that once is otherwise 
Unauthorized to obtain spoofing is of several types email spoofing, IP address spoofing, MAC spoofing, biometric spoofing, etc. Malware. Malware is made up of two terms malicious plus software. Malware is equal to malware. Malware intrudes into the system and is designed to damage our computers. Different types of malware are adware, spyware, ransomware, Trojan horse, etc. Social engineering. Social engineering attacks involve manipulating users psychologically and extracting confidential or sensitive data from them by gaining their trust. The attackers generally exploit the trust of people or users by relying on their cognitive basis. Polymorphic attacks. Poly means many and morph means form. Polymorphic attacks are those in which attacker adopts multiple forms and changes them so that they are not recognized easily. These kinds of attacks are difficult to detect due to their changing forms. Steps to ensure computer security. In order to protect our system from the above mentioned attacks, users should certain, take certain steps to ensure system security. Number one, always keep your operating system up to date. Keeping it up to date reduces the risk of their getting attacked by malware, viruses, etc. Second, always use a secure network connection. One should always connect to a secure network. Public Wi-Fi and unsecured networks should be avoided as they are at risk of being attacked by the attacker. Always install an antivirus and keep it up to date. An antivirus is software that scans your PC against viruses and isolates the infected file from the system files so that they don't get affected. Also, we should try to go for paid antiviruses as they are more secure. Enable firewall. Firewall is a system designed to prevent unauthorized access to, from a computer or even to a private network of computers. A firewall can be either in hardware, software or a combination of both. Use a strong password. Always make a strong passwords and different passwords for all social media accounts so that they cannot be easily key logged, brute forced or detected easily using dictionary attacks. A strong password is one that has 16 characters which are a combination of uppercase and lowercase alphabets, numbers and special characters. Also keep changing your password regularly. Don't trust someone easily. You never know someone's intention. So don't trust someone easily and end up giving your personal information to them. You don't know how they are going to use your information. Keep your personal information hidden. Don't post all your personal information on social media. You never know who is spying on you. As in the real world, we try to avoid talking to strangers and sharing information with them. Similarly, social media also has people whom you don't know. And if you share all your information on it, you may end up troubling yourself. Don't use pirated content. Often, people try to download pirated movies, videos, or web series in order to get them for free. These pirated content are at major risk of being infected with viruses, worms, or malware. And when you download them, you end up comp compromising your system security. Don't download attachments that come along with emails unless and until you know that email is from a genuine source. Mostly these attachments contain malware which upon execution infects or harms your system. Don't purchase things online from anywhere. Make sure whenever you are shopping online, you are doing so from a well-known website. There are multiple fraud websites that may steal your card information as soon as you check out and you may get bankrupt by them. Learn about computer security and ethics. You should be well aware of the safe computing and ethics of the computing world. Gaining appropriate knowledge is always helpful in reducing cyber crime. If you are attacked, immediately inform the cyber cell so that they may take appropriate action and also protect others from getting attacked by the same person. Don't hesitate to complain just because you think people may make fun of yours. Thank you.